Hi, I'm Neil Kelleher. In this video, I wanted to look at a way of approaching toe balance. And toe balance is a pose from Bikram Yoga. It's been popularized by Bikram Yoga. Balance on one foot with the other foot in lotus. And I won't be doing, I more than likely won't be doing the full version of the pose. Instead, I'll be doing variations of balancing on one foot with the idea of showing how you can work on foot, ankle, knee, and even hip stability to make balancing on one forefoot, which might be a more accurate way to describe this pose, to make balancing on one, on one forefoot a little bit safer, uh, ideally to give you a little bit more confidence in working towards the pose. And um, so I'll talk about some general muscle control techniques how to make the foot, ankle, and the more, more probably most importantly the knee, but the foot and ankle is important. How to make those stable. So as a starting point, because I'm not warmed up, one possible starting point is to start from standing with the heel lifted. And one thing you can do is shift onto the foot and if you haven't done shin rotations before, I've got a couple of videos where I talk about rotating the shins, where you, um, if you rotate the shins out, the inner arch lifts. If you rotate the shins in, the arch collapses. You can do a similar thing with the heel lifted. You can rotate the shin out, notice the arch lifting, rotate the shin in, notice the arch collapsing. And then from there, you can play with shin rotation and also body you can play with shin rotation in such a way that the inside and outside, that you can vary the way the inside of the forefoot and the outside of the forefoot contact the floor. So first of all, with shin rotation, you can vary the shin rotation so that your foot feels stable. And then from there, you can play around with the position of the knee, perhaps to try and get weight on the outside edge of the forefoot as well as the inside edge of the forefoot. You play around with that, find a position that feels comfortable for the forefoot and then from there if you like, if you shift it far enough, you can try lifting the other foot and balancing. Now carrying on with shin rotation, an important idea with shin rotation, with the shin rotated outwards you may find that you can get outer thigh activation. So for me, if I focus on one leg and I rotate the shin outwards far enough, I tend to get a point where the outer thigh activates and that tends to make balancing on one foot easier. It can affect the, the hip joint as well. So going back to sitting bone control, this is one thing that can go along with sitting bone control as an alternate to sitting bone control, activating the outer thigh. So going on to the other foot, what you can do first of all, rotate the shin inward, inwards or outwards so that the foot and ankle feel strong. Then further vary it so that you play around with inner outer forefoot pressure. Then see if you can notice outer thigh activation. And then from there, try lifting the other foot. Now, because forefoot balance is very intense on the knee, I would suggest that the more important thing for from that pre from what I was just talking about is getting outer thigh activation. And so from there, what you could do is maybe focus on pushing the knees out. So instead of focusing on the so focusing on the knees with the feet reasonably still, push the knees out, and you may be able to get outer thigh activation and that can be important. You may notice that your butt activates as well. What you can then try doing is with the outer thighs activated, lift your heels and then from there, see if you can go down so that your bum contacts the heels. And rather than resting in this position, try to keep the outer thighs, also the buttocks active. So this can be the next exercise playing around here. And this is relatively easy to balance. So from here, if I'm, because I'm keeping relatively still, I don't have to work about, I don't have to worry about correcting my balance. Instead, I can use my toes to help me balance. If I go too far forward, I can use my toes. I can press my toes down to prevent me from going 
too far forward. And the idea is not to press down too hard, just enough to help control. And as a side note, standing up from this position, that can be a lot more difficult than lowering down with control. And so what you might want to do instead of standing up, go down onto your heels and then stand up. So I noticed as I was standing up, that was quite intense. With the heels lifted, that can be quite intense. But something else that you could work on if you wanted to work on strengthening the legs, trying to keep the outer thighs active, keep the butt active, what you could do is try standing up slowly from this position. And if you go up slowly, you can make adjustments. You can stop, make adjustments, go up a little bit higher, make adjustments, go up a little bit higher, make adjustments so that your knees feel comfortable. So the next step from there is working towards balancing on one foot. And a way that you can do that is if you stand with your feet closer together to begin with, so outer thighs active, go down. And from here, what you can try doing is shifting to one side. So activate both thighs, shift to one side, and make sure that the side you're shifting to, the thigh, is active. You might want to try turning your hips left or right. So for me, it feels better to turn away from the leg I'm shifting towards. But take that with a grain of salt rather than just saying, oh, I gotta shift away from the supporting leg. Play around with it. Notice how it feels. So with the thigh active, try turning your hips slightly left or right. See if there's a position where it feels, where your knee feels happy, where your hip feels happy, where it feels strong. I need to come out of that. So so what I suggest, play around with it. So you could do the same thing while standing upright with outer thighs active. You could shift one foot, try turning the hips one way or the other, and notice how your hip feels. And this is very akin to tuning a radio. You can't just go to someone and say, okay, tune the radio to 1050, all right, and then turn it one millimeter, one radian to the right, and then it'll be tuned. It doesn't work that way. You have to vary it. You have to listen. Okay, a little bit to right, a little bit left, a little bit right. And then you gradually fine tune the position of the knob so the radio station comes in clearer. Or tuning an instrument, tuning a stringed instrument, you don't just turn it three turns to the right and then it's tuned. You have to vary the amount of tension that you have in the string. And then as you string, as you vary the tension in each subsequent string, you have to go back to previous strings to vary the tension so that all the strings are tuned together, at least that's my understanding of it. So likewise with this, rather than just saying, oh, you just do that and then you're set, you have to play, I would suggest you have to play around with it, find a position where your knee feels comfortable from there, find a position where your hip feels comfortable and then from there check the knee again. So this is a recursive process and it's a recursive process. So going back down again, activate the outer thighs, feel your butt activating. So going to the opposite side, go slowly and smoothly, see if you can find a position where your knee feels comfortable and your foot. And then from there, if you like, you can try shifting the other foot forward and lifting the other foot. Go slowly and smoothly. So I'm not doing it yet because my knees don't feel ready for it yet. And that's a very important point. So this is first thing in the morning. I'm not fully warmed up yet, or I'm not warmed up to the point where I feel happy doing this with my uh, knees. So do the same thing. Rather than having the goal of gotta balance on one foot, have a goal of working towards this intelligently, feeling your body while you're doing it trying to figure out what it is that you need to do in order to make your joints feel comfortable so that you can lift your foot with relative impunity whilst, um, not impunity actually, that's incorrect. So that you can lift your foot and without hurting yourself or damaging your joints in the process. So going down, so in the effort to warm up my joints a little bit more, something that you can do 
because balancing on one foot, you'll probably have to correct for balance. You'll have to do things to stay balanced. One thing that might be helpful while on both feet, activate the outer thighs, activate the hips, and something actually you can play around with is moving your knees out slightly and then moving the knees in while keeping your hips active, while keeping your outer thighs active. So move the knees out and move the knees in. So I'm dropping my heels to come up right now just to give my legs a rest. Something else that you can do, so with outer thighs active, butt active, adjusting a little bit so that the hips feel strong. Something else you could do, move the knees forwards and down. So if you touch the floor, great. Your toe flexibility might be a limiting factor. And then come up. And maybe even go the other way. So, come up, touch the knees to the floor, and ideally what you can do is just touch them lightly without actually leaning on the knees, and then come up. We're coming up slowly. So here what I'm focused on is mainly my butt, keeping my butt strong while I come up out of that. So, with feet close together, I'm going to start with the foot. I'm going to make my foot ankle stiff. So as I do that, my heel tends to lift a bit higher. I find with the heel lifted higher, I'm not actually trying to lift my heel higher. What I'm trying to do is make my foot and ankle feel stronger. And in order for that to happen, my heel lifts automatically. So it's a result of trying to make my heel and ankle stronger. From there, I'm going to try and make the outer thigh strong and then the butt strong. And then from there, that actually feels quite stable. So I can reach a leg forward slight amount and lift the foot and balance. Now, a key point. If you can keep your body reasonably still, very still, then you don't have to correct. Because you're keeping your body still, you don't have to worry about correction because you're keeping your body still. So a key point about keeping your body still is feeling your entire body. And one way you can practice that, you can simply stand upright. So a very easy balance pose is to stand upright. It can be helpful to have a mirror if you like. You can do this in front of a mirror and the idea is to stand as still as possible. In order to stand as still as possible you have to feel your body. Notice any changes in sensation which indicate that your body is about to move or has started to move and try to halt that movement before it gets too big. So there are going to be little changes in sensation, changes in tension which indicate that your body is shifting. The sooner you can detect those changes, the sooner you can fix them or prevent them and the easier it is to stay still. And if you watch my foot, so my foot, so every so often my inner arch will start to collapse slightly so as soon as that happens I, I halt it or I prevent it. Actually, it's something I'm not consciously doing. It's, it's happening automatically, but I can notice it. And so the point being, practice being still. Every once in a while, practice being still. So if you can practice being still, and while doing that, notice in your body, notice any changes in sensation so that you can stand absolutely still that can make balancing on one foot, that can make balancing in general a lot easier. So in the full version of the pose, the foot can be like this, or the foot can be like this in lotus. Some variations, people even do it with the, with the lotus foot bound. And I haven't worked on lotus in a while, and I'm not really willing to mess up my knee just for the sake of balancing on one foot with the other foot in lotus. But one thing to notice when you are doing lotus 
any sort of balanced pose or any pose where one part of the body is in contact with the other, that contact changes the way the posture feels. So if you do tree pose with the foot against the thigh, the feeling is a lot different than when you pull the foot away from the thigh. With the foot against the thigh, it pushes against the thigh and it affects the, the tension, the muscle control in this leg. So balancing with the foot on the, with one foot pressing against the other, one way to make it easier is to actually activate this leg against the foot, so push the two against each other so that you have a bit more control. And that's one reason I differentiate between bound poses and unbound. The muscle activation is different. The binding or the contact between two parts of the body changes the way the pose feels. So when working towards lotus or any variation where one foot is in contact with the other, bear in mind that the feeling is going to be a lot different. So understanding that keeping still can make balance a lot easier. One of the things we can then work on is actually what I'd suggest is balancing with the legs crossed. And here the idea, despite what I said earlier, here the idea can be to cross the legs without, with minimal pressure of the top leg. So starting the position like this, this is gonna, this bottom knee is gonna be the weighted leg. You could try lifting the knee so from here, activate the foot, ankle, make that feel strong, make the bottom leg, outer thigh feel strong. Come upright, and then from there you can try lifting the other foot. And here, it might be handy to have a wall, just because the other leg is on top. So again, stabilize the foot, outer thigh strong, hip strong. You can try moving your body relative to the foot. Maybe reach the arms forward and try balancing like so. So here again, the idea is to try to minimize any movement. And you can do that by working at keeping as still as possible. And bear in mind, it's gonna take a little bit of practice. So for myself, I found a tendency that last time I tended to, to stop back. So with, with feeling the body, one of the main areas you can feel is your contact with the earth, so your forefoot and your toes. That can be one way of detecting any shifts. From there, you've got leg activation, so, so foot active, outer thigh strong, hip strong. Maybe have your arms in front. It's a little bit easier to balance. So if you're using a wall, position yourself relative to the wall or whatever support you're using so you can have your arms relatively close in front of you so that when you move your hand away from the wall, you don't have to move it too far and thus have to account for it. So my foot is fairly wobbly. So so one of the things that I would have to work on in that position is controlling my foot. My foot was moving a lot. Now, next step from there. So in that position with one leg on top of the other with the legs crossed the way they were, the amount of downward pressure on the supporting foot is minimal. There's still a little bit of pressure, but it isn't too much. From there, what you could then try working towards is maybe with the ankle on top of the knee and that depending on your hip flexibility depending on how how much this leg can relax that is going to affect whoops that is going to affect the supporting leg a lot so if this leg can be relatively relaxed it's not going to press down on the top leg quite as much but if it's fairly tight in which case you might not want to do this pose until it's loosened up. If it's fairly tight, it's gonna press down on the, the knee a lot and that's gonna affect your ability to balance. It's gonna make it a lot more difficult to balance. If you are actually in lotus, that's gonna press down on another part of the thigh unless you can get the foot into the crease of the thigh, into the crease of the, of the hip, I should say that's going to change the way the balance. And then this too is also going to affect balance as well. 
So, so that's about as far as I can get at this moment with uh, one foot with uh, toe balance. But some suggestions are, so you have some ideas there on how you can work towards it gradually, or hopefully you do. So just trying it on the other side. Now this is my not so good side. So here again, I'm gonna stabilize the foot, stabilize the outer thigh. No, this knee doesn't feel happy, so I'm not gonna push, I'm not gonna push that. So what I'd suggest, work towards it gradually. The biggest point I can make, or I think the biggest point I can make for this is in order to stay balanced in whatever variation of toe balance you are doing, work at keeping your body still. So rather than worrying about how to correct, work at making your body as still as possible so that you avoid the need for correction. And the more you focus on feeling the body, the earlier you can detect any changes, the easier it is to correct for them. And one reason this is so critical in a pose like toe balance, particularly when one foot is on top of the other, or when one foot is in lotus, and especially when you have bound in the pose, is your options for correcting for the pose are extremely limited. Even if you're doing the pose with your hands in prayer position, you could say move your hands around, you could try moving your body in order to correct. But the better or the best solution, I think, is Focus on feeling your body, work at keeping it as still as possible so that you avoid the need for correction in the first place. Instead, focus on making your, your joints safe, so your foot, foot, knee, thigh, hip, even your spine. Make those strong and engaged. And you may need to vary the amount of engagement, so not super strong, but just strong enough to keep all the joints safe, uh, feeling um, strong and supported, but without being too strong, if, if that makes sense. So trying to find the optimum amount, amount of tension so that you can hold the pose for a reasonable amount of time, unlike myself. But from there, work at keeping your body absolutely still or work at feeling your whole body so you can notice any changes as early as possible so that you can correct for those changes before they become too big and knock you out of balance. Anyway, hopefully that was uh, somewhat helpful and uh, thank you very much for watching. If nothing else, even if you, don't, if you don't want to work towards toe balance, these ideas are applicable to balancing in general. So in poses like Bokasana or balancing on one foot, these ideas are applicable. The only thing then is practicing it in the specific balance pose that you are working towards. Anyway, thanks again. Namaste.